All this can happen provided you have the urge to do that. And many times, the processes which we follow can also become an impediment in, in, do, in doing innovation. In fact, I was reading a book by uh, one of the lady from Sweden, I, I'm forgetting her name, which uh, said that expert thinking, which we use in our own uh, system of reviews and all that, and group thinking are probably the major impediments or the stumbling blocks for innovation. Because when you have an expert thinking, you are trying to get approval from a set of experts. You will find that most of the time, the experts will say, no, 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 this is not feasible because of my experience and all that. But innovation does not always run through the experience. It, if you use the experience in a proper way, yes, certainly it can help. But if you get biased and carry forward your ideas which you have imbibed over 30 years, then you can't be innovating. So what is the answer for that? Answer for that in all these group thinking and expert thinking, you should introduce what is called zero gravity thinkers. That means free the people who can think freely and then they will be in a position to you know, come out with uh, some ideas out of box and that will help you to do the innovation. So innovation thinking and has to be corroborated through this kind of zero gravity thinkers which are there to overcome these uh, stumbling blocks. India lacks uh, design capability. I think all of you will agree with me that uh, our, our strength today is only in certain, to some extent in manufacturing based upon whatever designs come from abroad. And our own designs are rarely to be seen. And that's why, why it is happening. It, is, it has a historical background because when independence took place, we were in a hurry to to overcome the problem of, uh, of the loss which we had due to missing the industrial revolution. So we wanted to accelerate our progress and Pandit Nehru decided that we have best of the institutions but we'll get the technologies from outside under license and both private and the public institutions started getting. So there was no need for us to think about how to design a product. Unfortunately, this continued despite the fact. What Pandit Nehru thought was, that along with these public and private institutions, I will have IITs, I will have ISCs, I will have good institutions like BARC, SRO, DRDO, and all, who will then graduate into major design centers. But unfortunately, it did not happen, except in maybe two, three departments where you have today launch vehicles coming out, missiles coming out, atomic energy plants coming out of their own designs. But it did not happen generally. Now, if you want to really now make this change, we had to bring the concept of design thinking. Design thinking is absolutely essential for innovation. And design thinking is a process by which you can simply split the problem, identify the problem, and split it into uh, sim uh, simple elements and then start finding solution, which will be both it can be for the process, it can be for the uh, for, for product, it can be for anything. So the concept of design thinking has to be incorporated in all our systems if we have to do this, um, this, this kind of a change in the innovation cycle. I'm hearing a lot about innovation taking place in the country, particularly in the last two to two and a half years. Uh, we are saying that we have today a lot of startups coming in and uh, it's a good sign because many things are happening, both in the case of service sector e-marketing, and so on and so forth. People are riding over the available softwares which are available and building applications thereof. And it is a fact that Indian software, if you look at it, which can be considered as an Indian software of some substance, probably we will have to look with a microscope. We don't have. But yes, we have applications done by a large number of our people, and as a result, you are in a position to say that, yes, this is an app which will give you a better marketing capability and so on. What is missing <clears throat> and what is important for bringing economy is the engineering innovation. And if you don't do engineering innovation, you cannot create wealth. Friends, <clears throat> wealth can be created only if you do what we call uh, wealth generation. Service sector is one sector which does distribution of wealth. But manufacturing sector, agriculture, many of the places where you need engineering innovation is the one which is responsible for creation of wealth. And if you want sustained economy, 
It's only through creation of wealth, and hence the importance of engineering innovation. Now, why is it that we are not able to do engineering innovation? <clears throat> and how China has been able to do so well, which was about 20, 20 years back, was as bad as uh, we are today as far as the engineering innovation is concerned. One thing they followed was to <clears throat> get the business to business innovation and all in government programs. Suppose they are having a government program with this government of USA, then the Chinese industry will work with the government you know, com uh, with the U USA company, and in the process, the main thing is to capture all the knowledge and then build on that knowledge further. And this has happened very clearly. I'll give you an example. Our own Larsen and Tubro was asked to set up coal gasification plants in China. And they set up six, I think, six coal gasification plants in China using maybe the shell technology, but basic engineering was done by Larsen and Tubro. The Chinese companies worked with the Larsen, with Larsen and Tubro, and after setting up those plants, six or seven plants, they themselves opened their own industry. And today, LNT has to wind up their shop from uh, China. And now, the coal gasification is an export entity as far as China is concerned. So friends, in this kind of an association where there's a collaboration with the institutions which are in a position to do innovation, if we only learn how to manufacture, we will not be able to do new product improvements and we will not be able to make new products. So the answer for that is not only you have to learn the process of manufacturing, you have to also learn how and why of that particular product through this interaction. Maybe sometimes through payment, maybe sometimes through your own innovative methods of capturing the knowledge while you are, inter while you are interacting. <clears throat>